We're about to cover the top three video editing software for Apple computers and determine which is best for you for YouTube, social media, commercials, and tons more. These free software have no watermark, no time limit. Let's dive in. Unlike every other video on the internet where the creator recommends just one software to you, I wanna run you through the five major pillars that we at contentcreator.com use to evaluate different free editing softwares for beginners. Once you understand how the software compare to one another through the lens of these five major pillars, you will confidently be able to stop researching, download the software of your choice, and edit epic videos. So the first pillar is beginner friendliness. How easy is it for someone brand new to video to open this editing software for the first time and confidently produce a video without wanting to throw their computer out the window. Up next, we have the presence or absence of high quality one-click templates. These are crucial for people who want to edit videos extremely fast while still maintaining a professional style. Coming in at pillar number three, we have powerful pro tools that are still free. Yes, the templates are great, but sometimes you need access to the tools themselves that let you create almost anything that your creative brain can conjure up. Up next, we've got computer strain. Some programs programs require expensive computers to run without lagging, while others are relatively smooth even on older machines. Understanding how much computing power your software needs is crucial. Then finally, pillar number five is mobile friendliness. Nowadays, creators are editing videos on both computers and phones, and lots of editing programs actually have versions that run on both. Okay, so those are the pillars, and now we're gonna take our three recommended software and rank them according to each pillar. The three free programs that I recommend for Apple computers are iMovie, CapCut, and DaVinci Resolve. But which of them is right for you? And make sure you stay tuned because one of these is not what the internet makes it out to be. And by the end of this video, you'll know the best program for you. When it comes to the first pillar, this is where iMovie is really going to shine. So many beginner Apple users start on iMovie because, well, it's pre-downloaded on your computer when you first open it, and because it's extremely beginner friendly. It's actually the first video editing software that I used over 15 years ago. The key to iMovie's beginner friendliness is really the fact that it stripped the program down of many advanced features, giving you only the basics when it comes to cutting together different video clips and making very basic adjustments. For some some people, this is great because that's all they need. For others though, this lack of features is a deal breaker. Like most video editing software, you import your footage in the top left window, drag it down on the timeline, and start arranging your clips to tell your story. You can trim the clips, create split points, and even add an extra layer of video on top of the main track. We have very basic color adjustments, stabilization features for shaky video, and basic audio enhancements. Out of 10, we're going to give iMovie a score of 9 for beginner friendliness. Now, when it comes to CapCut, when you first open the software, you'll be met with a somewhat similar interface at first glance. And by the way, make sure you're downloading the program to your computer and not using the web-based version of CapCut. I see a ton of people getting confused by this. The web-based version just isn't as good. Import your videos in the top left of your screen, assemble your clips on the bottom timeline. You've got the same basic trim and split features. The playback window is in the same spot. This is really how almost all video editing programs look. But with CapCut, there is definitely a lot more under the hood as we inspect it closer. Unlike iMovie, which had an extremely simple and basic interface for the different tools at the top, CapCut takes it much further with a significantly higher level of control for each major category of tools. I mean, just the color adjustment tab by itself has four sub tabs, each with their own complex interface and another option to bring up color oscilloscopes. As a professional video editor, I absolutely love this level of functionality packed within a free video editor, but for the ultra beginner, it could definitely come off as a little overwhelming. The good news though, is that I truly feel if you are an ultra beginner using CapCut, you can stick to all the basic features without getting distracted or even overwhelmed by all those pro inclusions. With all this in mind, we're gonna give CapCut a seven out of 10 when it comes to beginner friendliness. Hell yeah! Then finally, we have the big dog, DaVinci Resolve. This is one of the most powerful editing programs on planet Earth, and the fact that Blackmagic, the parent company, has given us a free version this powerful is insane. DaVinci is packed with features, tools, multiple panels, all focused on specific subtasks like editing audio, complex custom effects in the Fusion tab, and so much more. The sky is really the limit with this 
program. And even though this is the free version that's missing a few features compared to the $295 studio version, you'll really be surprised at the level of features you get for free. However, with great power comes great responsibility. And for beginner friendliness, we're giving DaVinci a five out of 10, just because it can take a while to familiarize yourself with all the features. Okay, up next, we have quality one-click templates. And as someone who edits a ton of videos, I cannot stress enough how essential templates are in an editing workflow where you wanna produce high quality content, but you don't want it to take you hours. And just so we're all on the same page, I consider templates to be text and title animations, transitions, built-in effects like the ones you're seeing on screen right now, motion backgrounds, split screens, that sort of thing. iMovie is great for its simplicity, but dang, it is lacking when it comes to the templates. In the top left-hand corner of the application, you'll find tabs for audio and video, titles, backgrounds, and transitions. iMovie does actually come with a lot of useful sound effects built in, but that's really where the positive notes end. Outside of some extremely basic titles, backgrounds, and transitions, you're really just left wishing that there were more dynamic and modern templates. It really feels like Apple just made these templates 20 years ago and then stopped caring to update things. I mean, who hasn't seen a video made that uses this exact title template? I think I've seen my grandma use that same title in a video before. Again, if you're sticking to very basic edits, you're gonna be fine in iMovie, but for right now, we're giving them a two out of 10. Up next, we've got CapCut, and this is really one of the major reasons that I've been drawn to CapCut lately and have been using it for a ton of different edits. If you've seen a trendy effect in a viral video in the past year, it's probably available on CapCut as they put a huge focus on converting all of the popular trends into one-click presets. In the top left-hand corner, you'll see subtabs for text, effects, and transitions, and there are tons to choose from. We actually just posted a video on YouTube that covers all of my favorite texts, animations, and effects in CapCut, which I'll link above, but also in the description so you can watch that later. The only major drawback when it comes to CapCut is the fact that it really only supports text, effect, and transition templates that are already built into the program. For example, you can't just go out on the internet, find an epic title template, template like this one and then install it into CapCut. For these reasons, we're gonna give CapCut a seven out of 10 when it comes to one-click templates. Then we've got DaVinci Resolve, which is similar to CapCut in that it does have a lot of quality templates built into the software, but even better, DaVinci fully supports third-party templates, meaning the entire world has the ability to create custom templates and upload them online for you to download, which basically means the possibilities are endless. This is a huge bonus for DaVinci. Its catalog of templates is growing exponentially faster than CapCuts or really any editor that doesn't accept third-party templates. Comparing just pre-existing built-in templates, I would say CapCut has a slight edge with a better selection, but given the third-party support, DaVinci takes the cake and gets a nine out of 10 here. Okay, moving on, pillar number three is powerful features. For those of you looking to get really serious with your content creation, this pillar is an essential one to consider. Starting with iMovie, as you can imagine, due to its beginner friendliness, which was a highlight earlier, it comes back to bite them in the butt here. There's really no pro features whatsoever in iMovie, and worst of all, it lacks the keyframe functionality, which is really important to me, and we'll talk about it in just a second. For now, iMovie is getting a one out of 10. CapCut, on the other hand, is a different story with a pretty staggering level of pro features built into the free version of the program. And just so you're aware, there is a pro version of CapCut that costs $8 per month that adds more templates and pro tools, but I don't really think most people need this. One of these free powerful tools that CapCut includes is the support of keyframes, which we mentioned a moment ago. If you've never worked on a video before, this is gonna sound lame, I know, but a keyframe is essentially the process of anchoring a setting at a particular point in time. We can anchor a setting like this scale at the beginning of the clip here with a keyframe by clicking this button. You'll notice it created a visual keyframe on the clip on the timeline. We can then scrub to the end of the clip and anchor a new value for that setting, like increasing the scale. And now we've got a smooth zoom between those two keyframes, which is literally just scratching the surface of what's possible with keyframes. Keyframing is one of the most foundational tools that pro editors use to create some of the most incredible video effects you've ever seen, both on the small screen like YouTube videos and the big screen Hollywood movies. 
CapCut supports keyframes, which is great, along with other powerful features like audio enhancements, advanced speed control, high-end color grading tools, and one of my personal favorites, the auto cutout or rotoscope feature that in the click of a button will remove the background of your video, allowing you to do cool effects like this, where we have elements popping up behind us. I use this effect all the time. Now, despite the fact that CapCut has a good layout of professional features, it still holds a fair amount locked behind the paywall of the Pro subscription. And when you compare it to something like DaVinci Resolve or really any other pro editing software, there's still a ton that's not included in either the free or pro versions. But hey, it's still a really good balance and I think CapCut deserves a five out of 10. Then finally, we just hinted at it, but DaVinci Resolve is going to blow this category out of the water. It would be next to impossible to cover every single pro feature DaVinci includes in the free version in just one video, but I want you to know that you can do a lot with this editing program. Honestly, the free version of DaVinci Resolve gives some of the top paid editing software options like Premiere Pro a run for their money. The biggest standout for DaVinci is the color grading tools. There is hands down nothing that beats DaVinci when it comes to color grading cinematic content. It's the go-to for tons of Hollywood production studios. Beyond that though, DaVinci has a dedicated panel in the editing software called the Fusion Panel, which is an extremely powerful effects editor, allowing you to accomplish an insane level of complex edits. Overall, DaVinci is getting an outstanding nine out of 10 here. All right, now, before we dive into the next pillar, if you are finding this content valuable, it would mean the world to us if you took two seconds and hit the like, subscribe, and bell buttons. We post weekly tips, gear reviews, and trainings, and we even host gear giveaways, which you can only be a part of if you're a subscriber. Back to it though, pillar number four is a quick one, computer strain. If you've got anything but a top of the line computer, you're gonna wanna pay close attention here. Now, I wanna make one major point that anyone looking to edit videos needs to know. If you're editing and all of a sudden things are getting really slow and laggy and it seems like the editing software isn't working, before you blame the software, you wanna look at the type of footage you're editing because the video files themselves and how data intensive they are is the number one thing that will slow down your editing experience. If you're shooting video on a high-end camera with very high resolutions or in a video codec like like H.265 that's very compressed, it's going to slow down your computer, even if you've spent a few thousand dollars on your machine. But after the footage that you're working with, the editing program does play a big role. And usually the more powerful your editing program, the more it's gonna slow down your computer. iMovie is very basic and straightforward in its features, and it was designed to perfectly work on Apple computers. This means it will provide one of the smoothest editing experiences, even on older computers, so it's getting an eight out of 10 here. CapCut has done a great job of making the program relatively low strain on most computers, which is great, but keep in mind, the second you start using some of those advanced features, it could start lagging a bit more, but that's only if you decide to use those advanced features. So overall, we're gonna give CapCut a seven out of 10 in this category. Then finally, as you can imagine, DaVinci Resolve is going to require more powerful computers in order to run properly. Those super advanced tools require a lot of RAM and processing power, so we're gonna give it a five out of 10 here. Also, if you want a detailed video explaining exactly what to look for when purchasing a computer for video editing, I've got a video linked above and also in the description. It's a comprehensive guide telling you what to buy. Then finally, we've got pillar number five, mobile friendliness. Although I pretty much always recommend people edit using a computer, sometimes for those really quick edits or when you're not around a computer, it is nice to have a quality app on your phone. With iMovie, assuming you've also got an iPhone to go along with your Apple computer, you're in luck because iMovie also exists as an iOS app. This will allow you to easily take your editing on the go with your phone. This is where the good news ends because the iMovie app is extremely limited. Outside of cutting and trimming simple clips, it's not really good for too much. It's even limited in that it won't let you natively edit vertical video, which is really popular nowadays. There are workarounds like exporting the video in 16 by nine with the black bars and then cropping the video in the Photos app afterwards, but who wants to do that? All in all though, it is still mobile friendly, at least for iPhones. So we're gonna give iMovie a six out of 10. Now CapCut shines like crazy in this category. They have the absolute best mobile video editing app in my eyes, and it works flawlessly on both Apple and Android devices. It is extremely powerful, yet still easy to use. It's loaded with all of those epic one-click templates and powerful tools that we talked about earlier in this video. 
You can edit horizontal and vertical video natively within the app. There's really nothing holding you back here outside of your own creativity and the small size of your phone screen. What's even better here, let's say you were away on vacation, you didn't bring your computer, but you still wanted to edit a video. You could start by using the mobile app and then back that project up to the cloud once you get home and you've got your computer, you can open up that same project on your computer. This is super cool. Without a doubt, CapCut is getting a 10 out of 10 in this category. Then finally, we've got DaVinci Resolve, which unfortunately does not have an app that works on iPhone or Android devices. It's a bummer, but not really surprising considering most professional editors using this software really focus entirely on computer-based editing. However, I will say DaVinci did release a version of the software that does work natively on iPads, which is pretty dang cool. And realistically, if I were planning on using DaVinci on anything but a computer, I wouldn't even consider a phone. A larger iPad would be my go-to. For that reason, we're still gonna give DaVinci a four out of 10 here. All right, my friends, the ranking process is officially over. Now that you know all of the pros and cons, we can make our judgment on which editing software is right for you. But before we do that, let me tell you about 14 Day Filmmaker. If you want the fastest, easiest, and most affordable blueprint to master the process of shooting and editing videos using both smartphones and professional cameras, this is for you. It only costs $48, but contains three epic courses and hundreds of videos that will take you from knowing nothing about using your smartphone or a pro camera to a master content creator. Oh, and we also have entire sections of the course dedicated to teaching you how to edit in both CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. When you enroll, you get three courses. The first is 14 Day Smartphone Filmmaker, which teaches you how to turn the camera in your pocket into a cinematic powerhouse. The next course, 14 Day YouTuber, is a start to finish masterclass that covers covers everything you need to know to launch and grow a successful YouTube channel in under 14 days. We go over the planning, the shooting, the editing, and tons more. And finally, you get 14 Day Pro Camera Filmmaker, which dives deep into mastering the professional gear and editing software the pros use to create cinematic masterpieces. You also get access to our private students community where I will personally answer all of your questions on a weekly live coaching call. We have over 100,000 students in this course, and if you wanna join the community, you can enroll by hitting the first link in the description below. Okay, enough selling, Anthony, back to the video. So looking at the results of our test here, you can see that iMovie scored 26, CapCut scored a very impressive 36 and DaVinci Resolve came in with a respectable 32. I also wanna make a point here. On the spectrum of beginner to pro focused, this video that you're watching right now definitely leans towards the side of beginner focused, which is why CapCut scored so high. If we were looking at this same question strictly from the perspective of a professional Hollywood editor or a freelance video agency, DaVinci would have scored significantly higher as much more weight would have been placed on those additional pro features and tools. But I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're probably more on the beginner side due to the emphasis on the software being free. And I think the results we see here are relatively straightforward. iMovie definitely comes in third, but that doesn't mean it should be last on everyone's list here. If you're like me when I first got into video and you have a school project that needs an ultra basic edit that you just wanna get done quickly so you can go back to playing Skyrim with your friends, I I honestly think iMovie is a wonderful option due to the fact that it really strips down the process to just the essentials. Other than that though, I basically included iMovie as a solid reference point as an editor people are familiar with to compare against CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. And speaking of CapCut, I think for most people getting into video editing, this is more and more starting to look like the no brainer option in my eyes. Between the beginner friendliness, the one click templates, the fact that it runs smoothly on most computers and the inclusion of pro level tools in a free package that also has an extremely capable mobile friendly app, there's really not much more you can ask for. If you are someone who is looking to accomplish a specific goal that involves creating a lot of video content and you prioritize free, speed, and relative ease of use, CapCut is for you. Now, on the other hand, if your goal is simply to create the best videos possible and become as skilled as you can throughout the process, then without a question, you need to go with one of the truly professional grade editors, DaVinci being the only free option. I hope that makes sense and you can rest easy knowing you've chosen the right editing program for you. And by the way, if you wanna see an in-depth breakdown of editing in CapCut, click here and I'll see you soon.